Anselm uses an argumentative strategy that we haven't encountered yet. Up to now, we have seen direct arguments for conclusions. Both Plato and Aristotle reason from premises directly to conclusions. Anselm uses a device called reductio ad absurdum, which literally means reducing to the absurd. Now, this is an indirect strategy, which means that he won't be arguing directly from premises to conclusion. Here's how reductio ad absurdum works. First, it should be understood that the worst thing that someone can end up with in logical argumentation is a contradiction. If your argument results in two mutually inconsistent statements, that is, statements that cannot logically be true at the same time, then something has gone wrong in your argument. So here's an example. It's logically and physically impossible for a door to be open and not open at the same time. Now, people often argue, when they encounter this kind of claim, that it is possible for a door to be open and not open at the same time, say when the door is ajar. But this relies on an ambiguity. Is a door open when it's ajar? It's not wide open, but is it really closed? This puzzle would be solved if we could just agree on what we mean when we use the word open. Once we do come upon an agreement on what we mean, however, we would agree that either a door is open or it's not open, but it's never both. So contradictions, those in the form of P and not P, doom arguments. When we find that a contradiction follows from an argument, we know that something is wrong in the argument itself. So we go looking at premises to see where the problem lies. But sometimes philosophers use these contradictions to argue for a conclusion that they, that they want their audience to accept. They do this indirectly, however, by assuming the negation of the position they want to argue for and then show that the negation leads to a contradiction. When this is shown, we know that the negation must be false since it leads to a contradiction. If the negation of the conclusion I want to argue for is false, then my conclusion must be true. Here's an example. Suppose a computer scientist claims to have designed a chess program that will win in any game of chess with any opponent. Let's use reductio ad absurdum to show that this cannot be the case. Now to do this, we go ahead and assume that the computer scientist that the computer scientist's claim is true. So we the assumption there is that the chess program can win in any game of chess no matter what opponent is put before it. Now let's reason from there. So premise one is in games of chess, there can be at most one winner. This is from the rules of chess. There cannot be two winners. Right? There can be stalemates, in which case there are no winners, but there cannot be two winners. Premise two, programs can be run in multiple computers. This is just true of pro programs in general. Premise three, it's possible to run the same chess program in two computers. That is the chess program that the computer scientist has designed. Premise four, if we did run the same chess program in two computers, then the program would have itself as its opponent. Premise five, suppose we run the same chess program in two computers. And premise six, from premises four and five, it follows the program would have itself as its opponent. Premise seven, both computers would win because the assumption says that the program will win in any game of chess no matter which opponent it is, and premise 6 says that the chess program has itself as its opponent. So premise 8, here's the contradiction. In this game of chess, there can be at most one winner, as we saw in premise 1, which means there cannot be two winners, and there are two winners from premise 7. Now, since we came, across, came upon a contradiction, we go back to the assumption and we negate the assumption because the assumption itself actually led us to the contradiction. And so our conclusion is that the chess program cannot win in any game, no matter what opponent is put before it, because in games when it has itself as, as its opponent, it cannot win. That would be uh, probably a cellmate. So keep this in mind as we look at Anselm's arguments, because he uses this, this strategy quite a bit.